You got it. Matt Gorman, former senior advisor to Tim Scott, and Tim Hogan, former Hillary Clinton spokesman, uh, joins me now. Um, first of all, 14 buses here in New York in one day. I mean, that is ridiculous. And, and at this point, it is not really... I mean, Abbott is sending the buses here. He's trying to send a message to Democratic cities, and we get it. But New York City and other cities are now suffering, and innocent civilians are suffering, families with children are suffering. Who needs to help take the blame here? Which of you is going to agree with me as the Biden administration? Who else could you possibly point the finger at? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go. It seems like a lot of these folks, they want to be sanctuary cities until the actual consequences of being a sanctuary city is on the table. Let's remember, this has been happening for years at the border. And until these blue city mayors who talked about this in theory actually got a taste of what's going on down there, that they actually started raising alarms and talking to their leader of their own party, Joe Biden, about what the crisis is. Look, I was down there a couple weeks, uh, a couple months ago with Tim Scott. It, it was eye-opening. Uh, down in the Yuma sector. Uh, you have hospitals, housing, police, all strained for years because of this. They really, this falls the feet of Joe Biden and his inability to secure the border. Tim? Joe Biden sent a comprehensive immigration proposal to the Republican Congress on day one of his administration. In 2013, we passed comprehensive immigration reform bipartisan out of the Senate to the House. John Boehner killed it. Republicans play Lucy with the football with this, you, with this issue because they know they can demagogue it and because the political center of gravity for the Republican Party right now is Donald Trump, who says that immigrants coming into our country are poisoning the blood of our country and he's going to enact the largest deportation force in American history. We should take this seriously, but it's incumbent on Republicans to come to the table and stop using this as a wedge Okay, issue. but let's just remind ourselves that Donald Trump is not the president in the White House right now. It's, it's Joe Biden. And as far as, you know, the former policy under Title 42, the Remain in Mexico policy, that at least did curb the numbers. Of course, nothing has stopped the numbers, but it certainly curbed it. 250,000 illegal immigrants in one month is just unacceptable. And if you don't see that as reason enough to close the border and go back to Remain in Mexico, policy. I don't know what other policy they've got up their sleeve, but so far we haven't seen it. Um, there are, we have to move on, unfortunately. I would love to speak more about this, but we got to talk about uh, the upcoming caucuses. We have 18 days until the Iowa caucus, and well, it could be make or break. The Real Clear Politics average of polls shows former President Donald Trump with a big lead in the Hawkeye state. A new report says advisors close to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are attempting to, quote, make the patient comfortable. Ooh, that hurts. Ahead of a possible campaign suspension. He's running second in Iowa with Nikki Haley not far behind. There's one column headlined this. Ramaswamy and Christie get out of here now. Quote, like Ramaswamy, Christie won't get out of the race. He can do no good, but plenty of harm, dividing anti-Trump voters into rival camps and preventing them from coalescing around more plausible alternatives like Haley and even ailing DeSantis. Far from dropping out, Christie with a seven-figure ad, buy. Watch this. Some people say I should drop out of this race. Really? I'm the only one saying Donald Trump is a liar. He pits Americans against each other. His Christmas message to anyone who disagrees with him? Rotten hell. He caused a riot on Capitol Hill. He'll burn America to the ground to help himself. Okay, so Chris Christie obviously there is showing he's stubborn. He's not going to get out. He's going to stay in. And a lot of these candidates, you know, they want to they want to make it to the end. But when they look at the numbers, Matt, uh, are they being selfish? Because right now, I mean, Ron DeSantis at the very beginning of all of this was considered a very strong candidate. Um, is Chris Christie actually hurting Ron DeSantis in the end and Nikki Haley even? I think he's probably hurting Nikki Haley more. Um, but look, I think with two weeks to go, you know, Tim and I both spent time in presidential campaigns. I think at this point, it, it's with the voters. It's for them to make that call. The morning after voting, whether it's day after Iowa for someone like DeSantis or Vivek or New Hampshire or someone like Christie, if they don't meet expectations, they'll have to make some hard decisions and they should do it and should do it quickly. But I think right now, you're two weeks out. You got to give the chance for the voters to have their say, especially for someone like Christie. He's at 11 mid-teens or so in New Hampshire. He's a little bit behind Haley. His message is resonating up there. You give these people enough of a chance, I think, to at least have voters have the chance to vote for them or not vote for them. And then in short order, the morning after, see what the results are, stay in or get out and do it quick.
Make the patient comfortable. That's what advisors are actually referring to with Ron DeSantis. That is an awful comment uh, to hear. Uh, I, I got to ask you, Tim, you know, that comment, it could mark the beginning of the end of DeSantis's campaign. Um, this is obviously unwelcome news, but it also comes less than three weeks before the make or break January 15th Iowa caucuses. It's less than three weeks before uh, that. So where does the governor end his campaign? I mean, he, he must finish in the top two spots or he risks dropping out of the 2024 Republican primary. Um, what do you see in the future of, of DeSantis's campaign? I think DeSantis probably ends his campaign, and this is one thing that I agree with Donald Trump on, uh, falling like an ailing bird from the sky. This campaign never took off. Uh, there was never enough momentum. Uh, you have uh, strategists saying that uh, he is now Ted Cruz without the personality instead of Trump without the drama, which we were promised. And like Matt said, I think he's going to stay until Iowa. Uh, he needs a first or a very good second place finish in yes, order to does. continue, in order for this campaign to go on. All right, we're going to have to wait and see. It is only three weeks away, so right around the corner. Matt Gorman, Tim Hogan, thank you very much for talking to us. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.